Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back. Joining me for the final time about this season specifically on the block with me is Jojo. How are you today, Jojo? I'm doing great. How are you, you beautiful woman? I I am very happy that the season's come to an end. And that I'm I'm happy with the winner. I'm happy with who won Big Brother Canada season nine. Yeah, I'm I'm happy too. <laughs> that sounds like almost happy, but not ecstatic. We'll but get to it. I do think though that because of the type of season it was, I would be equally as excited with anybody. Like I would I don't think I would have been like, yes, with any of the final three. So Maybe that, yeah. like, would you have been jumping up and down I, for anybody? No, I, I absolutely agree with that. I was kind of going into it. I'm like, I'm cool with anybody winning, really. Um, but I was rooting for Tara. I was rooting for Brayden. <laughs> Fair. Hi, Fashion. You are waiting for us. Well, we are here. We are here. What are your Ooh. overall thoughts of how the season concluded? Um, I think it started off the episode. I love seeing the sweet different moments. Like I always am into a good, you know, montage, montage and past like events in the house. I do wish though that they showed some bits that haven't been seen before. We've talked about it before, but like, where is that damn roast? I want the roast. Why didn't they what play happened? the roast? What happened day three? And, and, and what happened day three? been dying to know thought we'd find out tonight didn't find out it's just like we talk about it but we don't know what actually happened like i mean it seems like he just popped off and like was yelling at everybody but i wanted to see a little snippet of it i don't know why they were maybe he said something uh, off line offside like i don't know why they wouldn't show it because they look they want their entertainment they hold back the feed so like they can dictate what we are going to enjoy so why would they take keep that away from us bastards how bastards. dare they i don't get it so um one thing that i like that they did the announcer or whoever the script writers they said to sean from charmer to chess master brayden from social butterfly to social prodigy and Tara from underdog to comeback queen. This is Big Brother Canada Nine. Yeah. Like I, I like when they kind of button up their stories a little bit. I don't know if it's exactly perfect, but um, I was into it. I thought it was a good read on everyone too. Um, I was really impressed with the finale in general. Not having a live audience, there was still a ton of urgency, and it was exciting. Um, we well, kind of the last that. half an hour could have been not there yeah i would say like the, be the beginning up and up until we we saw the pre-jurors i was really into it and then i was ready for the vote i'm like just give it to me tell me tell me who wins i want to know exactly the rest of filler yeah, I mean, they're just trying. Like, it could have been an hour and a half easily, easily, easily. They showed the fights instead of the rows. Yes, BB, and thanks yes. for hanging out with us here. I mean, I'm happy to see the fights, sure, but I wanted to see the roads. Like, I, I watched the fights on the on the feeds and on the show. Like, I wanted to see <laughs> the roast. You know, or yeah, and what else did we miss that they like that from those first week or whatever that we yeah. they didn't show us any more of? Like, I want to see all that stuff that they kept away from us. What happened on the weekend? That weekend that they they kept away from us. Like, I wanted to see maybe a little bit more about how that all went down. They just Nothing. did not want to show us that. No, they were locked <laughs> in the room separately. They were like, no talking, nobody. <laughs> Fashion says, I think it concluded well. I thought that they should not have cut the speeches because the rest was filler. Absolutely. Like they're giving them one minute, but then like there's 75 commercials and like all this garbage filler. Like everybody in the jury and in the, the first five got more time to talk than the final two making their, their speeches. And if it was two minutes, that's not that big of a deal. I feel like they would have both wrapped it up in less than like 30 more seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah, give them when two minutes. 
when Ty won the final HOH, I was like, give this man the W. That's interesting. Uh, we will definitely be getting more into who we thought was going to win and if we think this Ty was deserving of the win um, and if we we're surprised by the vote. So that will be something that we're going to discuss soon. Ty winning final head of household gave him the win. Well, that's kind of most likely the person that wins the final three head of household is in the highest favor to win because that's like the biggest move in front of the jury. They won two parts that they had to do to get themselves to the final two seats. Unless they did absolutely nothing in the game, it's just too flashy. Do you yeah. think that Ty would have been able to win if it was Brayden that ended up taking him? Now that I saw all the votes, yes. Even if Brayden was like, I'm taking Ty, and like had all the all the same stuff, like, you know, I want to see two black men sitting here, et cetera, et cetera. Because I do feel as though Brayden had the votes before the whole um, you know, the whole episode. Because even so the two people that said it for sure was Tara. And then yeah. also even Victoria was like, Brayden's got my heart, Brayden's got my vote. And so I was really thinking that Brayden was gonna get it no matter what. Yeah, I, I'm shocked by the vote. I thought once the final two was cemented that Brayden had the win. I thought his jury answers were beautiful. He was incredibly articulated um, and spoke with purpose. And I feel like he gave an incredible final two performance. I definitely agree with that. I think he sold it to me. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I mean, I would be, I would be satisfied with, with Brayden as a winner. Um, I mean, just to jump to the end a little bit, but when I saw the, that Victoria had voted for Ty, I was like, oh, Ty won the game. Cause yeah. like, and then when Rohan, I was like, oh, Rohan too. Okay. Ty has definitely won the game. Um, yeah. and then obviously Jed, we'll probably talk about it more, but it bothered me how many times Ty was saying, I'm loyal. I'm loyal. I didn't throw anybody on the bus. I'm loyal. And I was like, you're not loyal. Oh, and when he's like, you're like, you're all oh, my man, my man, Jed would never do that to me. Like, wait, what? Like you really expect these people to be your man. And then when he, I thought he did a terrible job answering best question about jury management being like, Oh, like, what did he say? Um, you know, my, my game should, should prove what that my jury management, like actually, no, that's not what jury management is at all. Yeah. I was shocked. I was like, ooh, ooh, this is not good. Uh, what do you think about Latoya calling out the show fans? I, I, she never was really that big of a fan of Beth. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised, especially because Beth was originally kind of with Ty in the beginning. And then, then she moved on over to Jed. And then after like all the things that she did to get Jed out and probably, you know, she's probably, Latoya has been probably talking to his Jed's mom and stuff. I do feel as though they're not a fan of Beth's. And I thought it was, I was like, oh, Jesus, this is so cold. Burn. <laughs> Burn is right. Yes, I agree, BB. Brayden answered the questions much better. Brayden seemed calm, cool, and collected while when speaking to the jury. Absolutely. I think he did a much better job than Ty. Except for Tara, lol. The jury was not bitter. See, I still think that they are bitter, but they voted, they didn't vote uh, that way. Like, I think that I feel as though actually Jed convinced Beth to vote for Ty. I think that he convinced her because I don't think that she was really planning on it. During the, during the jury segment um, with Anthony, I think maybe Ty, Beth said it outright that maybe we were looking at Ty's game in the wrong way. So that's when I, that's when it started to click in for me. Well, maybe they are going to be leaning towards Ty if it's Brayden and Ty in the final two. Um, and at that point we knew it would be. So, I don't know. I thought it was kind of up and down until the questions. And that's when I thought Brayden has this. He did a beautiful job of saying what he needed to say. And it didn't work out for him. I'm I'm actually I I'm actually surprised. I'm yeah, surprised. 
Ty mansplaining jury management to Beth was a low moment. Absolutely. Like, I would think that that lost him his her vote. I, I wrote down like, oh, he lost Beth's vote. That's what I thought. Yeah. Especially like just he, he the fact that he just straight up lied to her too. He's like, I've never thrown you under the bus. I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't believe it. Of course you have. Everyone, not everyone, but most people have thrown someone else under the bus. And maybe they forget about it. Maybe it was in a side conversation, but it's happened. He so, allowed Beth to take some heat for some stuff. That that's yeah. uh, that's throwing Beth under the bus. <laughs> um, I think maybe because he's not that great of a game player, and I don't think he's that big of a fan. I don't think he understands what jury management is, and I don't think he understands what throwing someone under the bus is, and et cetera, et cetera. Like I think he just doesn't know what he's talking about, basically. Fair. I think that Ty played a better game and Bray had a better speech. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Brayden was a little bit more reactionary and Ty was in the driver's seat. Yes, he was with the trio yep. or with the Sunsetters, but he was dictating a lot of what happened. And I really do feel as though Brayden he should have, he needed to say something about like, I wish that I had made my mark with that move or something like that, because that, that move was, I think what lost him the game. He needed to have saved Tara and have, I guess it was Kiefer that I think was going to go up on the block instead. And it would have been Kiefer or Beth out or whatever. I can't remember what the dynamics were, but he needed to save Tara and, and, and take some control and like dictate some things in the game. Um, because I think that him, it looked as though he was just doing exactly what Ty did the previous week and it didn't, wasn't successful. So he's just doing Ty's bidding. So and if he wanted to, go ahead. He did. He asked Ty like, well, like we're going to vote out Beth. And Beth said, no, or sorry, Ty said, no, we're voting out Tara. He did exactly what um, Ty wanted. In that moment. And then, well, and then after though, with the, even the using the, like, it just, it just was bad. It was just bad for his game that yeah. he did not use that opportunity when he won his first veto to not just win the, it doesn't matter to win the veto, but doing something with it that's good for your game is yeah. what the jury would need to see. It's not just the win. It's what you do with the power that's important. So I think that Tara made a hundred thousand dollar mistake by voting out Kiefer, because I think that Kiefer would have not have won the first part of the HOH. Yep. I think that then Tara would have won instead of Brayden because she was the closest next to Brayden. And in the, I'm not sure a hundred percent of the final three of the, the HOH, but the final part, but she has would have a better chance, I think, uh, against Ty. Like, I think that she would have done equally as well or potentially better. So she could have won that final HOH and she would have been able to bring, she would have brought Ty. Yeah. Probably. And I mean, she would have at least got 20 grand and making that move, she it might have been flashy enough. She would have had Tina's vote. She would have had uh, probably, probably some of the oddballs votes. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised at all. I think that she would have had a better shot at winning the game and she would have at least got second place. So I think she made a big mistake by keeping Brayden around. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The only the only thing I might differ on is um, Kiefer did do really well with that balancing the apples during that, like that. Veto but he's win. still kind of clumsy though. Yeah. Like, oh, I just don't see him being that that agile for that type of competition. Like... I was shocked Brayden won it. Well, I love when he was talking about... Well, let's just talk about that competition, actually. Yeah. Um, so part one, uh, did they give it a name? I don't know. Oh, and actually, before we go to part one, yes, Arissa in that red ball gown. Oh. Yes. Yes. Ten yes. Ten. 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 Tens across the board. All across. I <laughs> uh, loved every aspect of it. The drama. The, the color. Of... It's the perfect red. It's so good. I was like, she needs to be on a cover in a magazine in that dress. Give her Vogue, yeah. people. Give her Vogue. Give um, her I thought that she looks so good. Pardon? Give her British Vogue. <gasps> Ooh. British Vogue. 
Oh, British Vogue. Well, I'd want to do British Vogue better than American Vogue. Like, I want to, European Vogues are like where it's at. They have actual style. Um, <laughs> yes, I thought that she looked amazing. I was so happy that she pulled the showstopper out for the finale. So I definitely thought that this was her best look for the season. And, you know, you got to love a great red dress. So I was impressed by that. So on to the competition. Part one is they had, they're each in their own lanes. Okay, let's see if we can just explain this. And there was a, a hovercraft, still trying to figure out how this relates to the whole superhero comic book, like apocalypse theme. Still trying to figure it out. But yeah. I was kind of going like, maybe it's back to the future and they're trying to go back to the future to like, to redo season eight. Like, I don't know, I was trying to make it make sense. I don't know. So they had a hoverboard that they had to push to one side. They could only put five discs on at a time on each end. And they had to go underneath when they went to go and put the new disc on. So they had 60 discs that they had to put on their hoverboard in on top of two very small, it seems like maybe a, a like a five set of five millimeters. How small? It was pretty small, like a dime size cylinder that they had to put these coaster size discs on top and stack them up. Yeah. So difficult, but it seems like it would be doable. They gave them four hours to complete this to whoever gets the 60 stacked in four hours. Now, is this a design flaw that they did? They tie all timed out and they had to go to sudden death? I guess so. I assumed it would be whoever had the highest at the end. That's what so I thought too. My strategy would have been like the last 20 minutes is when you like kick it into high gear and just try and get the most. Um, and just stand there. Possible. Yeah. So I was shocked that it wasn't just whoever had the most. They did go to a sudden death. They made it easier for the, for the, the, the house guests. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't think it looked impossible. No, I was surprised that they took the four hours and did not complete it, that nobody actually won. Um, but I definitely, I don't like the fact that the win, the competition that allowed them to win was different than the competition that they did for four hours. Like this was like, they were allowed to stack 10 at a time and they only had to do 40. And the first one with 40 is going to win different competition. If they said the first one would say, like, it would have been different if they had the same rules the first time around, it would have been finished and it might not have been braided. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I was kind of, I would have been annoyed if I was doing decently well in that competition and then it's changing, like it's more speed this time as opposed to being careful. It just tests a whole bunch of different things that you didn't, you weren't working on for the last four hours and I would've been annoyed. Absolutely. Hate I that. mean, un unless I won, but like if I didn't win, I'd be annoyed. There's the key, that's the key. If you won, you're like, all right, I'll take it. But it's not, like it's not a win you're gonna feel incredible about. No, so, like we know how that feels when like the game is one thing and then all because something didn't work, it changes to a completely different game. It's like, yeah. well, what that's, well then why did we waste four hours playing the other game when it's just that we're supposed to be doing this? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think that they expected that somebody wouldn't be able to complete it. Um, and so this was probably just their last, oh, what do we do? What do we do? But I think that they should have workshopped it better or something. Um, give them more time. Give them six hours. Like, making an endurance. Who cares? Keep going until you get it. That's yeah. That's what I want. Why didn't, why didn't, why was there a time limit? Everyone was, production was tired. They had to get out of there. Union rules. I don't care. I don't care production. I don't care. Like it's, I think it's a fail that they worked on it for four hours and then a completely different game. Somebody else wins. Like I yeah. just, I would be so pissed. Like yeah. so pissed. Anyways, how do you guys feel about it in the chat? Ooh, BB ever says a hundred times better than Julie Chen. Yes. I'm going to, and I'm also going to take it because we went to high school and middle school together. Yes, Sarissa. I'm still, okay, I can't remember. Next time I go to my mom's house, I need to find our yearbooks because at the school that we went to, we had yearbooks from we were nine years old. And so I know that I have at least like a poem, I think beside Arissa's poem 
in the yearbook. Like I feel like I remember seeing a poem of hers. So and I want to oh. see it. I know and I can also picture another photo of her in it. And I think I'm in another photo on the same page. I just remembering this is obviously like 30 years ago. <laughs> but like um I want to look in the yearbook to see if we have any um you know pictures and stuff like that on the same page. Um, so remind me to find my yearbooks because I have I'll have okay. ten year or eight yearbooks that I'll be able to go through to see um you know me and Arissa's linkage. Linkage. And so yeah, I hundred percent support Arissa because she's my people's. Yeah. Um, I love the discom. Um, was that the time that no one was able to finish the, the first time no one was able to finish a comp? I haven't I can't think of one off the top of my head. But this is like, why did they have a time limit? Most of the time, it's you go until you're done. They do similar stuff like this on Survivor, where you had to like, you know, walk your way back. I think they even did it last season or the season before on Big Brother, where they had to walk it back and keep something balanced. Like they do similar stuff, and you just do it until you get it, um, yeah. not in a certain amount of time. And so I think that it's a design fail. I enjoyed the comp. I thought it was a good comp but I hated the fact that they had to go to sudden death and it was a different competition, basically. Similar, but different. Ditto. Yippers. After four hours of practice, each player knew he could do four. Yeah, I, yes, true. But I just, I just, it still just puts a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, especially if I was Tara, because Tara was, I think, in the lead with the 60. You know what I mean? I can't remember actually what happened. Did she drop all of her stack? Or was she, did she have no, the she most? Was. I don't know. I know that Ty's had just fallen. So he was just out. And I don't know what Bray's, I don't remember, to be honest. I think, I don't remember. Sorry. Regardless, though, like, I would have been pissed if I was Tara. Because Absolutely. it's just a different game. So Brayden wins part one, though. Good good on him. Um, happy that he got another win under his belt. Um, I love the fact that he is referencing some, you know, laws of motion, <laughs> you know, talking about how, what is it, everything that's in motion doesn't always wants to stay in motion. So he was being cognizant of like not stopping abruptly, making sure that it, taking accountability for the movement forward when it's coming to a stop. So I love that he was really doing a good job with winning that comp. So he may have won it no matter what. I'm not sure, but um, I do think that he, he deserved the win. I think he, he it was good, but I felt bad for Tara and Ty that they didn't they didn't get it. So um, Tara, you know, she wants to make her kids proud, and like this is where I was really getting on Tara's side. She was narrating a lot, and then I was like, oh wait, if she's narrating a lot, I feel like this is them kind of phasing her out. Um, they know the outcome of the competition, or the like, the, at least of the final two, and so I think that they're giving her an edit because they knew that she was going to be snippity snip, snip, snip. Do you think so yeah, too? She wasn't, she wasn't looking too happy in her diary rooms in general, I found. So mm. there was no part of the thought, oh, she won this part. Even part two, I'm like, oh my, especially part two. I was like, my God. Part two, let's talk about it. Light them up. Light them up, light them up. She was doing so well. and. She allowed a car, like, okay, I get it, getting flustered and, like, overthinking or whatnot, but she only really needed to do five combinations, you know what I mean? Like, at that one that she was kept on, kept on losing, she needs to, like, knock one, this one down, lock this one down, and just do a trial and error because she didn't have any idea. And so the fact that she allowed herself to get mixed up and frazzled, I was like, that was her self sabotage right there. She lost herself herself the game in that moment. I thought. Me too. I it was hard to watch. I had to get up. I got up off the couch. I couldn't watch. Aww. I was like, no, I'll listen. This is awful. I cannot imagine having a meltdown like at final three, part two, like just oh, and knowing that you're the one that needs to win this to make it there. To. She had to. Win I'm it. sure. Usually, usually when watching the live feeds on a, in any other season, we know who won part one. We know who part one, part two. We know if they if they're telling the person that didn't win that they're going home for sure. Out of both people, 
usually know what's up a little bit more. So it was just hard to watch and know that these boys are definitely bringing one another and she flopped twice. Yes. I mean, the disc one, I can give her a pass on that because it was challenging and nobody was really doing that well. Um, yes, yeah. Bibi and saying the pressure got to her. It happens. It does happen. But I also think it was yep. it was her own inner saboteur coming in and not allowing her to do as well as she's been doing this whole season. I'm going to be at $0 on the stock watch because I put my money on Tara because I thought that she was going to be able to focus and do and do like being able to laser in and pull out that win because that's what I've been seeing her doing all along. She's on the block, she laser focused, yeah. she pulls out the win. And so I really thought that she was going to be able to laser focus here and pull out the win. And for whatever reason, her inner saboteur was not going to let that happen. She was going to allow herself to fail, which is, it's so easy for me to say on the outside, like, oh, you could have just, just focus and do it. I, I know that's just, it's easier for me to say, but it really, it's really what happened. We see it happen all the time with like, you know, professional yeah. athletes even where they finally get to say the Olympics and they fail, they flop at the Olympics their first time out because they're not used to that concentration and focus and being able to perform under pressure. And so I'm s saddened that she didn't pull through because I thought that she knew how to, to harness the pressure. Um, but yeah. it was, she was overtaken by it. That's what it was yeah, going to would scare really Bibi on the show. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I, I'm incredibly confident with Tara for, for both part one and part two. I was like, she can do this. She's the type of person that has attention to detail and that's incredibly important. So when she started to, to kind of discombobulate, that's when I knew like, Ooh, it's, it's over for her. And I, and then they show Ty doing it and Ty seemed to be having a little bit of trouble, but not a meltdown trouble like she had. And she, he didn't get tripped up on the same question that she did. So I was like, Oh, cause I was thinking like, well, if she got messed up on that one, maybe Ty is going to get messed up on that one as well. He got messed up on another one. Um, and he didn't yeah. seem to have any trouble with that one or they didn't show it anyway. So I was like, Oh, Tara's not winning this one. I'm like, okay, Tara's done. Tara's out of here. Um, because even the balls, say again, even throwing the ball, even throwing like the balls, I thought, Oh God, like this is not good for Tara. Yeah. The first thing that I said, I'm like, Jesus, Tara can't throw. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I would be able to throw really well. Maybe the balls are really light. Light balls are very challenging to throw. What I thought was going to be like interesting is, though, when you knock down the ones and then you move to the next set of numbers, did you clear away the old numbers or could they get mixed up in them as well and then you could not know the second set of numbers or third or fourth, you know? Because it would all be in the middle. Yeah, that's brilliant and terrifying at the same time. I feel like you'd have to be really sure about what you're doing. Unless maybe like, we couldn't really see, but the answer was all right. Well, maybe like we couldn't see, but like maybe there's like a, a number on each of the, the, the cubes that like, Oh, question one, question two, question three. Maybe there was something that we couldn't see that distinguished them from each other. Cause I was like, man, like having 30 cubes in there with numbers on it. Like, how do you know how far your cube went to go pick up that cube from this pile of cubes? So I didn't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I love, BB loves the disc comp. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, he already said this one. Um, yes, we did that and that too. Okay, so I'm sorry, but everyone on the season I could tolerate to some capacity except Beth. Even her jury segment annoyed me, LOL. Beth, 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 Beth. I don't mind Beth as much as most people do. I think that I would be able to tolerate Beth if I was in the house with her. And I don't really have a high threshold for tolerance for people. So <laughs> I think I'd, I'd be okay with her. I think that I'd just be like, hey, let's just calm down a little bit. You know, people don't like people that are annoying. Just uh, shh, shh. Um, what, what are you going to say? I feel like if I was in the house with Beth, I'd be encouraging her to be intolerable. 
Like, you're, sick, you're, you're right. You're, you're right evil. <laughs> Honestly, oh my God. Canada, I, I truly think that Canada would probably hate me. So I do feel for Beth a little bit because <laughs> I'm sure that I, I don't know if Canada would like me at the end of the day. No, but they people would be rooting for you. Be like, oh my god, the ultimate like um, pumper upper Beth, the fire starter is JoJo. People would people either would love you or hate you. Be like, oh my god, don't let JoJo in there. We don't want more Beth. <laughs> she, I guess she was though. No, I found who did I find the most annoying? Um, I found. What? Rohan before he became the underdog quite annoying um I didn't like the yep. tone that he had when he was speaking to people it was kind of condescending when I didn't think that he had the right to to come off as superior so his him and Kyle also both annoyed me more than Beth did combined um and it just was the way that they were speaking to people as if like they were Vic God's gift him. pardon me Oh, Vic and, and Vic really annoyed me. Didn't yeah, Vic, Vic yeah, Vic really annoyed me way more than Beth annoyed me. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, yeah, I would. I would. I would have wanted Vic out like immediately. So, like, how you guys are hating on Beth? I would have been like, Victoria's out of here. Like, she's so annoying. Um, maybe Canada would hate me because she's so entertaining. But like, I'd be like, I can't take it. It's too much. <laughs> I also felt this the soy speak is the first time Beth and Jed have any idea that America didn't like their showman's dead. Um, yeah. Who who made the face? They're like, <sighs> somebody made a face. Brayden. Oh, Brayden. <laughs> Ouch. Are you ouching me? Like not liking spicy V? Or like, she's okay, but she was annoying to me. Beth is Beth. Beth is an acquired taste. Yes. Like, yeah. sad to say, but I would be friends with Beth over Victoria. <gasps> sorry, sorry. I'd be guys. friends with Victoria. I mean, you guys are earth signs. What's her name? Beth's a fire signs. So fire and air work well together. So... It's, it's a thing. Beth seems like she has a lot of friends. Stop it, BB. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think she probably does. Mm. Kyle annoyed me too. I forgot about him. Yeah, let's forget him. I mean, actually, I was interested in the fact that it seems like there's still interest between him and Austin. So maybe Kyle will be her first boyfriend and maybe he'll she'll lose her V card to Kyle. That'd be kind of fun. Be like... Something awesome. interesting. Beautiful night. Well, she's gorgeous. She's like probably the prettiest person of the cast. Like stunning. She's just so stunning. So stunning. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, Tara. I thought that the, like Tara messing up that question was gonna be another misdirect. Kind of like how she was freaking out with the superhero one in the in the last um whatever competition, veto competition. Um, so I really thought that they were just like, oh. She's saying that she did a terrible job, but she's gonna still win this one. But then Ty only got 11 minutes and then even tell us what time Tara got. So I feel like it must've been really bad. Um, and you could tell what it I said, 11 it minutes. 40 what? 40 something? No. 40 no, 40? Yeah, that's no. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time. Oh, because like you could tell though, as soon as they said eleven minutes, and she didn't even flinch, she just like, and I was like, oh, she didn't, she did not win this. I did feel bad for her. Yeah. Um, so Ty, though, one thing that he was saying a couple times in the his diary room is that he wants to see two black men sitting in the final two, and it would be the first time ever that's ever happened, and it would be the first time in that case that a black man or a black person has won any sort of iteration of North American Big Brother. I don't think any other black people. Am I correct here? Besides Celebrity Big Brother 2. Right, with um, uh, because the final two winner Tamar. Tamar, yeah. And Ricky. 
Right, but I, I don't really, I don't really count celebrity because oh. celebrity doesn't necessarily go through all the same, you know, diversity issues. You know what I mean? Because like they're they become in a different class. So yes, they were diverse. Obviously, they were with both black people, but I don't really hold it in the same as regular Joes going in the house and competing for money. So um, I can't think of anybody else um, that was, we'll say, black. Um, what else we got going on here? That shocked me, Kyle Austin. Please give me a percentage for their survival, ten percent. Well, listen, I think yeah. that it's problematic that we're in lockdown still in Canada, and Alberta, which I think is where Kyle is from, is has a higher surge than Ontario, which is where Austin is. So both of these are like super hot spots right now for COVID. So I don't see them doing all the trips and like the hanging out and the, the, the events together and being flown around and doing um, appearances together. So I just don't know if they'll have an opportunity to see each other enough in order for them to really start um, something more than just flirt friends. So I'll say 10%. If it wasn't COVID, I would probably say like 35%. I was going to say 30, think? so there we go. Yeah, so if it wasn't COVID, they yeah. might have a better shot. Like five. Um, okay, so BB asking, did, did he hear right or she hear right? Ty's time was 11 minutes and Tara's was 49 minutes. I didn't hear what Tara's number time was. JoJo was saying that he thinks he heard, yeah. but not on the show, like from like feeds, right? Oh, I thought I thought Brayden said um, because they were celebrating, and I thought that Brayden said that it was forty nine. Wow. Okay, I didn't hear that, but if that's the case, then man, like she she shit the bed there. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. I actually, didn't mind Kyle Austin relationship. I don't mind them that much. I don't think that they're gonna last, obviously, but I don't mind them together. Them flirting and talking together made me like him more. So there's that. Certainly no black person has one regular big brother in the U S exactly. And, uh, no, there's been one black person in final two, which was Godfrey and, um, Anthony in season seven yeah. and Gary, right. And Gary, Gary should have won Gary. Yeah. So there's well, three times. So what? I should Tonight, I showed my partner um, the Topaz video of the finale, I'm like, and he oh. shit a bro. It's terrible. Like, roared. He was laughing. He's like, this is, the, this is like traumatic television. Like, <laughs> this poor girl, this poor guy. Then the winner, he was like, I feel bad for the winner because like she probably thinks like I didn't deserve to win. Beautiful. I'm, I'm happy that it still holds like as a standalone piece like it's still like wow that was pretty shocking shocking i think ty's speech was nice because the, the having the first two black people in final at final two and diversity in some uh sense of sexual identity as well absolutely i mean i definitely i was always standing ty i really i loved him i liked ty personally more than I like Jed. I was rooting for Jed because he was on my draft team, but like I, I enjoyed Ty a little bit more than Jed. And then I just really couldn't get behind him after the Beth and Jed like eviction times. But other than that, I was starting to warm up to him again. And if we had those two more weeks, like we usually would, I probably would have been on the, the Thai train, like 100% being like, okay, I love you, Thai. Let's go. Let's win this. But it was still, for me, still fresh. I, I was still a bitter a bitter viewer. <laughs> um, and so kind of like how Latoya was still a little bit upset that they turned, the Sunsetters had turned on each other. Um, I was still upset with, with Thai a bit. But um, I definitely think that what he was standing for, I support. And I'm happy that he wants to represent Canada and, like, be the winner and, and have that be part of his representation. So I'm down for it. Yeah. He's, 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 a, he's a good winner. He's a worthy winner for sure. The closest was Danielle Reyes, who finished second. She deserved that win. See? She got robbed. Robbed, yes. Tara had her. I heard forty nine minutes in a clip on Twitter and tie eleven minutes. Oh my goodness! Uh, 
I agree that Chantel, I liked a tie all season. Yes, me too. I loved him. And I still think he's so cute. He's so cute. Ugh. Yummy, yummy, yummy. He looked great. I loved him. I loved his suit. But I also noticed that he had makeup all over his shoulder. I think that was from right. Brayden. I wrote that down. After the hugs. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely Brayden. Yeah. Uh, Brayden doing a little bit of makeup for showtime. So I, I wrote down, I'm like, damn it, I went all in on Tara. I'm out of this. I was so annoyed. I was like, and I was going back and forth between, I'm like, should I do it all on Ty, all on Tara? Should I go all in on Ty, all in on Tara? And I decided to go all in on Tara. One of the reasons was what I said before was that she has been somebody that in a pinch, she comes, she pulls through. So I thought that that was reliable. And yeah. then also to buy Tara, it was at a cheaper rate. So I think she was like $2 and something and Ty was at like $4 and something. So I'm like, well, I can get more value out of Tara buys and then it, the return would be greater. Um, but now I got zero when I would have at least, uh, at least doubled up if I'd just gone Ty. Oh, it's so brutal. I'm just, like, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Like I'm gonna be at zero, like literally $0. <laughs> It's the okay. worst. It's fine, I guess. Not, I guess. It's not real money. Yeah, it's, okay. It's, it's okay. I know, but like, it, it was the one season where I had the money, like, all in on so many people, and then it was like the wrong week for be all in, and I just kept on losing money. Like, it was definitely a very difficult season to to gauge who was doing well and who would be a good buy. Nobody did well. Like, so say usually it's around 2,500 is how much money the winner has at the end, like with who, who picks the winner instead of like the number one spot. And right now before the finale, it, Taryn was in the number one spot at like $550. So if he doubles up in a little bit, he'll get to like maybe 11, $1,200. And that's if he goes all in on the winner. So if he goes all in on Ty, he will get maybe twelve hundred dollars. Um, but some people, yeah, and then that will be the highest. So that's you can see how poorly people were playing, and nobody could understand or gauge like what's this gameplay? Like I went all in on Jed the time when he, I was like, yes, he won the veto. All in, I'm all in on Jed. That's amazing. Yes. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, wait, hold on, it's this one. Tara must have peaked before these comps and ran out of gas. I think mm -hmm. she just lost focus and she allowed herself to get in her head. It's it's all about getting in your, in your head. We talk about it all the time. We work as actors and dancers and performers. And it's really easy to go in and mess up an audition or even a show because you get in your head and you allow yourself to be like, I don't, I'm not, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough. Like all this stuff gets in your head. You forget your choreo, you forget what you're there for and you mess up. And it's, it's, it's a really a game with yourself. And I think that she allowed herself to take her out of the running. She didn't, she, she just couldn't overcome it. And it, it's hard. I, we go through it every single day. Like it's something that I work on constantly. I'm actually studying yeah. hypnosis. So I can help people overcome their subconscious mind chatter that prevents them from the success that they want. And she just allowed her subconscious to just to overtake. It's more powerful. Yep. Fashion says, I always rooted for him. Was a little mad when he turned on Jed, but felt better when Jed said he would have taken Beth over Ty. Okay. I, it's it's not what he did. I would be okay with him cutting. Even the trap door would have been fine if he just said, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you. This is my only chance. That's it. Like, I would have been fine with yeah. that if he just owned it and said that. <laughs> it's the fact that the whole week he was pretending like it wasn't happening and that it was their fault for, like, things that they, he didn't even talk about. Like, what do you mean it's my fault that I'm I'm going home? It's like, no, we're doing this to be together. What do you mean it's my fault? Like, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, I've said it a thousand times why yeah. I think I don't I don't like it. <laughs> I don't mind the move. I would have been I would have been like, oh, that's 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 cold, but like he's owning it. Like him owning it would have been so sexy. Think about how sexy that would have been. Like him like being like, bro, I can't beat you. You put yourself in a really compromising position here. I'm sorry that I have I to use this so. opportunity to take you out. I'd be like, 
Oh my God, the balls on this guy are huge. You're hot, Ty. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're clutching your pearls? Oh. <laughs> yeah, like if he did it immediately. Like if he told him literally at the veto, that would have been incredible. Like he takes veto ceremony's done, then Ty rises. You're going home, Jed. You should you should have used the veto on yourself. Something like that would have been incredible. And I would have championed him and been like, yes, that's the move. Like, take ownership. You want to own this move. It and it was all this like group mentality that it was it was actually Kiefer's idea, but Brayden, oh, I was in on it. Tara, I'm in on it. Ty, I'm in on it too, everyone. We're all in this together. Just own your shit. Be proud of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you had to rate this season highly. No line steamrolled to the end, and the ending still had some suspense. I think it's a great, a fabulous season. Um, Obviously, I have my own qualms about it because like, I really like strategy, and so the fact that nobody was making moves that I would ever make in the house was kind of frustrating as a viewer for me, for what I enjoy in Big Brother. Um, but it's definitely was entertaining if I just looked at it as a piece of television and entertainment. So I think it rates as about an 8.5, maybe even a nine of a season. Um, 8.5, it would be a nine or nine plus if they didn't do that to the feeders. Because the feeds to me are part of the experience of the show. And so it, it takes away from it from me. And I do think that I would have had a different excitement level if they hadn't ruined my momentum on how I enjoy um, taking in Big Brother. So I give it about an 8.5. I think that's pretty solid considering I'm not happy with them. You know, what do you think? I would give them um, a 9 out of 10 only because I do think that Canada is superior to the American version. And I hated season seven. So this has been such a nice, exciting time in the Big Brother universe. I didn't love All Stars. I liked All Stars was fine. All Stars was terrible. Because it was exciting. I give All Stars a six. There. No, I mean like... Oh, All, All Stars season seven was amazing. But All Stars... Oh, seven. Yeah, that was like a, that was a 10. Was yeah. But 22... Like started off with the cast that was rude for me, and then did this, Thanks. and then plummeted. This season has been th this, but all pretty high. So the majority of it for me, I've been really happy with. Yes, I definitely, I definitely, I, I said it, I think yesterday, was this was the first season in a long time that I was enjoying thoroughly all the way through, even though I have my like upset about this and I'm upset about that. But these are just small comparatively to being, I didn't want to watch the entire ending of All Stars because I was like so angry with how it was going down. Like I couldn't, I actually couldn't watch. I only listened to updates and watched some of the live feeds. Like I couldn't watch the episode because I was so frustrated and angry. So I didn't feel like that really um, during this. I was able to watch and enjoy for the most part. So I'm giving it an 8.5. JoJo's giving it a nine. I would have given it higher if they hadn't done the feeders dirty. 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 Um, uh, so I agree with everything until the end, entertaining until the end. Well, and I think it's because the momentum was sucked dry. There was four days where there was not a peep about Big Brother on Twitter. A peep. It's bad. Terrible. No, true, true. The this... reason I check Twitter is, is my brother. Exactly. And I go to my That's certain people to see what's Twitter. happened. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Twitter must be pissed. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Twitter be like, oh my God, you, Big Brother Canada is yeah. ruining Twitter. <laughs> True, true. The scheming is what upset me too, LOL. Yeah, he should have owned it more. Totally agree. Yes, exactly. Own it. If I was in that jury, I don't think Ty would have been winning. I'd be like, he's not owning his moves, man. I don't like it. Um, I'm ready for the Twitter drama. Yes, I want to I wanna know what Jed's mom says to Jed. That's what I want to see. So that would be, that's going to be really exciting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You, you think? No, they're not home yet. Or maybe he's talked to his mom. Yeah, that's talking to his mom on the phone. 
She's probably like, leave that girl alone. But her, she, no, but Beth is probably like talking to his mom, be like, hi, Mama Jed. Like, you know, like doing the whole girlfriend talking to the mom thing. So she's going to have to wait until she has her baby home alone. So Anthony Douglas, uh, the poutine poppy, comes all masked up to talk to the jury. Um, I didn't hear about this coming. Did you have any inclination that he was going to be hosting the jury roundtable? Yeah, no idea. Yeah. That was, Me that neither. Was really fun. I, like, I like. I would have preferred to see Arissa. But Anthony was fun. Yeah, Anthony. Anthony was fun. I mean, I I liked Anthony, but I. It, why are we telling him that his that he's the, this mastermind? Like everybody's just like, oh my god, you're the best player that didn't win. Like. I, I didn't really feel that. I think that he was playing a game with people that didn't know how to play. And he was able, he was in a strong group of people that were winning the competitions. Yeah. And he was willing to cut his friend. Like, I don't know. I just didn't think that everything that he did was that impressive. I'm sorry, Anthony. I'll still talk to you if you want to come and chat with me here and tell, teach me how you were the best player. Um, I'm not, no shade. Like, you, it's always impressive. You can get to the end. You can get to the end. Um, but just for scrutinizing and critiquing here, I'm not, I'm not that impressed. I don't know if you could pull it off in any scenario, which is what I think makes a great game player is knowing that they are capable of doing well under any circumstance. And I think that Dr. Will has proven that he's able to do that. Also with um, Dan Giesling has proven that he's been able to do well two times, get to the end pretty much both times. So even yeah. Nicole, I don't like Nicole, but like she has proven that her strategy is able to get her to the end multiple times. And even the knowing Paul as well. So these people are like, I don't necessarily like their gameplay, but I think that they're more impressive game players than Anthony because I feel as though their game is repeatable. They, they can do it again. I just might not like it. Um, I don't know if he could do it again. Do you think he could? Um... Depending on the all, like if if they do an all stars cast, he could do really well. But at the same time, he's one big boy, and if I saw a big boy like him in the house, and I mean, maybe I would go and Bye. and try to work with him, but as a shield, maybe. But I don't like telling people tell me what to do, so I don't know if I'd be able to play that game. So, hmm. what will you give Jed Beth for a wedding gift? Don't kill me. Um, what would it give Jeff, Jed and Beth for a wedding gift? Um, I don't know, a, a membership to some sort of like, what's it called? Um, a swingers club? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what would you get them? Why do you say that? I was going to say Beth's friend's phone number. <laughs> oh my gosh dying okay why wasn't jerry wearing a mask yeah i i, I don't know oh no okay this is what okay oh this is what i'm thinking must have happened because i i worked on set during covid about like a month and a half ago and the protocol for this particular set was that i had to have covid tests a couple times the week in advance and there's certain regulations on how we had to wear the mask. So all the crew had to be masked all the time with the K95s. We had, we obviously, when you enter any building, we had to be wearing like regular K95s. And then throughout the day in between, we'd have face shields. And so that's how we were able to do it. And then we, when we were, when we were recording, we would have it off. And then you'd have like, if you were, had mask off for a certain amount of time, then you'd have to put mask on and have like a, like a separated break for a certain amount of time. And so that's what was happening when I was being considered as cast is that I didn't really have a mask like this on all the time. I only had the shield mask in between takes and stuff like that. So I'm assuming that they went to a similar guideline like that, that they had COVID tests two days before and four days before and a week before, probably. And um, and I think that's probably how they rolled. I think that that's how film and television generally rolls for groups of people working on set. So that's my guess, um, that they probably all had, you know, their 
the one of the second AD has all their masks in like their own separate bag that they would put on between any takes or any cuts. That's my thought. That's my thought. Yeah. I think so. Um, so yeah, Beth was bitter, but then Kiefer walks in and everybody was kind of sad to see him. Um, but he was starting to pump up Ty. And so and it's, it did seem that there was a little bit of a shift there. It seemed like Kiefer was actually more mad at, at Tara um, and was now seeming to be pushing for Ty, which I was a little bit surprised about um, because if it wasn't for Ty, he would have still been there, you know? So I was surprised about that. Um, Tina, of course, is proud that Tara is still in there, making it to the final three because she won that veto and was shocked that she took out Kiefer um, instead of Brayden, which I think might have been a bit of a, bit of a mistake. Might have been. Might have been. So right now, Brayden has Vic's vote, or yep. and I was, that's where I was like, oh boy, okay. So Brayden has like Vic is going to vote for Brayden. Like, this is bad news because then that means that Rohan probably gonna vote for Brayden. And that also means that I would say Jed and Beth. And I was like, Brayden's winning for sure. Brayden's winning for sure. So Tara or Brayden and Tashawn do the final three competition, which was, I don't know if it was a good competition. I'd rather have been like, who said this or finish the sentence or um, which one of the jurors said this yeah. um, to, to be knowing the actual temperaments of the jurors, because I think that's a lot different than knowing like the numbers. You know what I mean? Um, Cause like some of the answers was yeah. like, was it 36 votes or was it 38 votes? And yeah, impressive that you could do this quick counting and you're like, oh, I know that number, but I would think it would be more better to show your social game as to how well you actually know your house guests um, as a way to be showing them, you know, how, how well you got, got to know them throughout the game. So what do you think about the final three? The comp, uh, the, the viewer three. in me. <clears throat> Yeah, the viewer in me um, agrees with you, but if I was playing the game, I think I would have <clears throat> preferred what they actually had as a challenge, because that's something you could know, numbers that are recognizable to you. So I probably would have felt more comfortable um, with like being able to study for something like this instead of just like hoping a prayer that it's A or B, <laughs> then what I'm saying is right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I know I see where you're coming from as well, uh, as well. Like definitely if I was playing the game, I would want something that like, if I count, I can get the correct number hundred percent. But I do think that it would be helpful in front of the jury to make them be like, Oh, he has absolutely no idea what I'm thinking. Yeah. And like, he never took time to get to know me in the social part of the game and that he wasn't able to answer this question correctly. And so I just thought it would showcase something to the jury different than you memorizing numbers and data. They, they already they just had three competitions that were like that that where they memorize these things which is great i know this is part of the end game competitions like and i love those competitions because it is where you can take your own life into your own hands but i would have really liked for a little bit of the social part of the game to have some weight and i think that Braden would have maybe done better than ty if it was a, you know a judgment on social game or social elements of the game so, you know, you know, you know. So I saw the final showdown, I thought it looked amazing. It was a black and white comic strip. So I thought that that looked so good. I was like, you guys did well. Like these the last couple comps were pretty excellent to look at. Um, go Canada. And so, yes, Ty repeats that he wants to make history to see a black person win BB Can. And so this is what he's saying right before he evicts Tara, because Ty did win that final part three of the head of household. And that's when I knew I lost the stock one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and um, and Ty Tara was not going to be sitting in the final two seat. I felt bad for Tara because if she had kept Keeper, she would have most likely at least won 20 grand. But, you know, she made her bed. She's definitely team Brayden, though. So I was like, ooh, two people team Brayden. This could be bad for Ty. 
So Tara's introduced the jury. I thought that they all looked super cute though in their outfits. Um, Tara's dress was adorable uh, when she came out to the jury. They're all happy, sad. Tara's, or Tina was really happy to see her. So I like that. Um, and then I wrote down, I guess this is when they started doing the question, but I was like, uh oh, Ty saying I was honest and loyal. No, he wasn't. To, to yourself. <laughs> yeah, you're loyal to yourself. You're honest with yourself. You knew what you knew what the truth was. Um, yeah. What did I say? Ty didn't use me. I used Ty. Oh, I like that Braden was saying that, like, um, I'm well aware of the relationship that I was building with Ty. When Austin left, I knew that I needed to have people want me to be around and want me to to last longer in the game and so i love that he said i ty didn't use me i used ty i was like yes brayden own that because people are saying that you're some sort of victim yeah. to ty when like you were completely in control of what was going down there and so i was like yes brayden you too yeah. me too yep. so, for sure. you too um who, somebody asked, were you a third wheeler? And I and I didn't think that Ty answered this question really well. Um, and so, who asked, how was evicting Beth better for your game? Who asked that? Was it Beth? Who knows? No, okay, Beth? I don't really remember. I can't remember. I, I should have written down who said what, but Beth. I didn't. Um, but Beth was, oh, I think it was Rohan. Um, but Beth was pretty upset and be, and she, I thought she had a very fair question. She's like, when you said to be have to have fun in jury, you lost my vote. How are you going to gain it back right now? And I really didn't think that he gained her vote back. I really didn't. So no. my opinion. Uh, Kiefer asked Brayden to explain why Thank he you. deserved it over Ty. Say it again. I said, my, like, I agree with you. I did not think Beth was going to vote for Ty after that. Me neither. Brianna, I'm so sad that the season is over. I've loved so much watching this podcast. Aw, oh, thanks, Brianna. Always look forward to it. Can't wait for your episodes on The Bachelorette. Yes, Brianna, The Bachelorette's coming soon. We'll be doing, um, I might do, since we do know who are, is in the, the, the season for the guys i might do some tarot tarot predictions for the cast um and maybe do like a one-off like that and maybe do another one-off of like all the drama that's been going down you know with matt james and uh rachel kirkconnell so yes expect in the last two weeks of may to be some more bachelorette content but yes we will be coming back soon. So thank you so much, Brianna, for being here with us. How did you find the whole season? And were you happy with the winner? Natalie, Jed asked that question. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Natalie. I just like completely locked off <laughs> who, who wrote it. I, I mean, I guess it could have counted backwards. It would have been, it'd have been Victoria, Rohan, somebody, then Jed, I guess. Um. And okay, so and I also didn't like though that Ty was saying that they turned on him. They turned on him. Like I just how he was owning it, I didn't think for me it wouldn't have sold me. And so I'm 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 happy that he did what he needed to do and he knew the people that he was playing with that it was they were gonna forgive him because there's no way that if it was done to me like that, that what he said would have sold me and made me want to give him my vote. So he knew his people better than I know them or than it would have been if it were me for shizzle. Um, yep. Oh, so I love Tara though, was really trying to give Brayden an opportunity to really showcase his game. So she was like, when did you show that you were a force to be reckoned with in this game? And I, I love that she was really supporting him and wanted to give a really good question where he got to just like show what he was going to do. And I, I'm, I'm sure that they probably planned it um, beforehand be like, Hey, can, I'm going to ask you this question if I'm gone or what do you want me to ask you? And so I think that I feel like they planned it. Um, it seemed like it because yeah, he had a decent answer. So I think that he rehearsed it. So I wrote, I think that Ty lost the game. That's what I wrote at that point. I'm like, I think he lost the game. I'm like, I think Ty lost the game. 
he, he was saying that he never threw anyone under the bus. And I was like, I think, I think it's over. Like, I don't think it. Um, and one thing that Braden said in his final, like his final speech was that he never received one vote and he was on the block five times. That's impressive. Yeah. I think not one vote. And I was surprised though that Ty didn't hammer home more that he was never nominated because that, like I forgot about that part and that I think is, is impressive, including in the final three. I think he's the only person that's actually done that. It made me really question if the final two questions and answers really make a difference or if people go in thinking like, if this is who's there, that's who I'm voting for. Like, how I do much of it think really changes in that minutes. I think that they knew how they were voting because if they judged it on the answers, I don't think people would have voted that way. I think they already decided how they were going to vote, regardless. I agree. Ooh, yes, Bachelorette readings, yes. Talk about Libras. Ooh, I love Libras. I'm Aquarius girl. Um, I think Brayden was the only Libra. No, there's no Libras this season. There's no air signs, girl. Brayden is a Taurus, so his birthday is in and around now. Um, so there was no air signs. So there's no Aquarius, no Gemini, no Libra. Um, and there's no, yeah, that's the only um, element that wasn't represented, or only sign I think that wasn't represented because there was all earth and there was all fire uh, and all water. Wow. There was no Scorpio and there was no, that's it. There was no Scorpio. So there's no Scorpio, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini on this season. Can, can you tell I'm a Libra? <laughs> yes. Um, so there wasn't much talk about that sign. Now there was just no, I mean, the only difference is that, or the similarities, similarities between Libra and Taurus is that they're both ruled by Venus. And so you do have similarities with Brayden in that regard, um, with loving things that are beautiful and, and value your personal, uh, you know, beliefs and stuff like that or st stuff that's kind of comes pushing from Venus. You love tangible things that are valuable. So that could be how you have some similarities with Brayden, but he is earth and you are air, girl. So we talked to the final first five that were evicted. Um, I, it was nice to see everybody. Um, I think that the hit was definitely Latoya. Um, she was the one that was most interested in hearing what they had to say, but I, I, I did really like the cast and I was happy to see the first five even come back on the screen. I love seeing no the reactions of everyone, like getting to see themselves on television, the fights, mm -hmm. the messiness. I love it all together to be able to see that. It was sad that the five pre jurors were on Zoom, but still they were there. They were celebrating. It was great. Yes, it was. So I loved all the fights. I love the hot messes express. I also really loved, um, I know it's a little bit overkill, but they did like the, the diversity segment and like showing a lot of clips on the, the house guests having that experience. And so I'm saying it's overkill, but I think that it's something that was actually really needed. Um, because we need to be more comfortable with having these conversations and seeing it on our screen. So let's keep showing it. And so, yeah, for me, I'm just yeah. like, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. But no, I think that more people need to see it to be like, well, okay, yes, I need to get comfortable with this. This is the new normal. Um, and so that it doesn't have to be like pushing our face so much. So I, I really, I, I, I cried a little bit over Kiefer cause I thought that, you know, even though I didn't necessarily like how he played the game all the time, I do really think that he was coming from, you know, he, representing his nation and his people, and he was very proud. So I, I was happy that people were really supporting him. And he was the one that took away Canada's favorite player. And I think it definitely was a part of his his people voting for him. And so um, I was definitely happy that Kiefer got to take yeah. home $10,000. Were you surprised by Kiefer getting that win? Not nope. at all. Not even a little <laughs> bit. I was waiting for them to cash his check. I'm like, give him his money. 
Give them his money. Yes. Um, and just so you Americans know, uh, we don't get tax on our winnings here. So he gets the whole $10,000. Um, so, yeah. you know, I already talked about the America's favorite player, but, uh, or Canada's favorite player. Um, just so you know, the votes, so Victoria voted for Tishon, Rohan voted for Tishon, Tina voted, voted for Tishon, and Jed voted for Tishon. So that locked it in. Um, and then uh, later on, Brissa said that he had two more votes and one vote from Tara was for Brayden. So almost a clean sweep was tied. Very surprised. I thought it was going to be maybe a 4-3 the other way. Um, I think that even though I didn't like that move of his, I think he'll be a good winner. I think it's nice. Yeah. I think guy's a worthy winner for sure. I, out of all three of them, I was happy for anybody at the end of the day. Me too. Me too. Twitter says, I like the season. It was really entertaining. I enjoy Messi. Love the representation. I'm not so thrilled about the winner. I wanted Kiefer to win. Then I wanted Tara. And then I wanted Brayden. So, LOL. But I'm thrilled about Canada's favorite player. Yes, but Kiefer could have got there. He dropped the ball as well. He could have gotten Tara to take him. He yeah. could have. He could have made that happen. And he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do it. So. I was reading for, I had all my money on Kiefer until he decided to basically self-evict. Um, I felt that this cast was made up of mostly genuine, kind people yeah. I, I've ever seen on Big Brother. Yes, there was backstabbing and such, but I, I really felt that this cast was really kind, good-hearted people, very happy that the guy got replaced before the season started. Absolutely. I mean, we don't know if he would have been a prob problematic in the house, but um, it's nice to know that... He, that energy was never brought in that it was potentially an issue so i totally agree i think that everybody is quite lovely even in their backstabbiness it wasn't that bad they weren't that mean it's kind of like how like on the circle uk how everybody was thinking marika was so horrible and nasty i'm like she hasn't done anything like <laughs> like she hasn't been that nasty like, so i'm just like judging exactly it's like oh somebody decides to like beat you in poker like they're just a nasty player like no they're, they're not but if they lie to you and then they say that they're not lying to you that's different <laughs> no tax on winnings wow yeah zero and um, that's why you see with like olg and all that stuff like there's actually like rules with like gaming but like it, you don't get taxed on it um, I don't, I don't know why, why the U S tax is like 30% and we tax nothing, but that's one of the reasons why Canadians aren't able to play American versions of the game is because of the tax uh, taxable dollars on the winnings. So if they were to win, they, I mean, I would just pay the tax, like, let me play. So I'm not sure that's what like kind of must have happened with Survivor, which is amazing. So if you got taxed thirty percent playing Survivor US, it would still be a million Canadian with the exchange. So it's like whatever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> would Austin have liked the original guy better than Kyle? No, Kyle's cuter than the original guy. The original guy was a little bit more seemingly rough around the edges, more like a Dane kind of vibe to me, like a little bit more like canadian you know like just like canadian white guy you know <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's just like yeah. hockey you know just hockey i also guy. i also love, bro. i love the i love the fact that there was just no straight males around white males around i just loved it oh that's true like, there's not gonna be a straight male Elias is all the way to the end, and like they're two girls, they each of them have a girl. Yeah, force up. No, nope, didn't happen. Um, so anything else we want to talk about? I did love that. Um, Arissa at the end said to Ty, You're the bishop. I was like, I, That kind yes. of made me a little bit moved a bit because he did have that whole um segment i don't know if he was prompted or what but talking about he's a bishop bishop he has to take out the queen and the knight like and the king and and you know he he's going to be using the pawn as his way to you know he was kind of it wasn't exactly 
perfect what he said, but I like the fact that he won with the bishop. I thought that, that was cool, and I th I like that she called him that because he might get this as a nickname now. I'd call him the bishop. Ty the bishop, it's cute. You you know when I run into Ty in the street in Toronto, I'm gonna be calling him the bishop. I me too. Me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you and JoJo cover Big Brother USA? Absolutely. I will definitely be doing it for Reality Pop. Yeah. And so JoJo will definitely be here with me. So 100% yes. Um, we're also going to be doing some, you know, between seasons um, podcasts. So I'm thinking, tell me what you guys think of going through each season. As far as I can, anyway, starting with season, we'll say two looking at all the games in the entire season. So the vetoes, the, the luxury comps, and kind of just like dissecting each season's games and seeing how um, the evolution of games have impacted uh, Big Brother on a whole. So that's what I was thinking of starting to do for the in interim between now and Big Brother US starting, I'm assuming in, in July. So what do you guys think about that? That's what I'm gonna probably workshop. Hmm? It's July. July or end of June. I don't know. I hope it's, I hope it's the beginning of June. It won't be the beginning of June. It's never the beginning of June. Oh, I just want it's, to know. <laughs> I know I need a break. I need a break. Um, and I want them to have an yeah. opportunity to get yeah. the cast really good. Like they need to like, do a good job because they have big shoes to fill for a first time they have to have they have to fill the shoes yeah. the big shoes of big brother canada what else do i have so yeah Brett Kiefer has canadian favorite player and oh and i wrote down brayden's makeup on ty's jacket so that's it that's it that is it that's all i wrote down for this episode i didn't really yeah. write down that much so i knew that we would be talking um, I'm happy that we had a good season. I'm happy that there was a lot of diversity. I'm happy that Ty has opened the door to see uh, a black man win the game. So if he could do it once, that means it can be repeated. So that's definitely really nice to see because I wasn't sure if I would ever really, unless it was me, see a black person win Big Brother. So I'm happy that it could be a new trend that is starting. So it gives it gives me a room to go in and be the first woman, uh, black woman. So do you have any final thoughts, Jojo? Hold on, what does Natalie have to say here? Do you see Twitter drama now that the season is over? Oh. Yeah. It's going to be between, I would say, Beth's mom and Beth and Jen's I mom. Been... Um, he's, she's asking me for C, though. Do we, I cannot do we wait. expect to see? Who else there might be oh. dra drama with? Um, yeah. It didn't seem like Tara was that excited about giving Victoria a hug after that fight. So, cause Victoria was like, yeah, girl, I just came to hug you. And she's like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be hugging you yet. I was like, okay, they might not be friends. Um, Ooh. Who else might have drama? Maybe Brayden might be upset with Ty for the fact that Beth wasn't really lying about what he had said. He might watch that. Yeah. I mean, still brought him to final two. He still made twenty thousand dollars because Ty did that. But uh Brayden's a big boy; he'll get over it. But I do think he played with his heart more than his mind. Um, do you so think that there might be, be a upset. Twitter drama over it? What other Twitter drama do you think might happen? Um, Jed and Beth for sure. Um. I don't know. I'm 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 really curious as to what kind of presence each person's going to have on social media. So I'm sure like in the next week we'll know who's going to be on, who's reading, who's posting. Maybe Beth doesn't want to see anything. Maybe Beth stay clear of of Twitter. She really should. That would be my <laughs> suggestion. Just to not one. Roots, roots, roots. Beth versus Latoya Twitter, Twitter drama. I wouldn't be surprised. It doesn't seem like Latoya is a fan of Beth at all. Um, and then maybe Jed will be defending Beth. So it'd be Jed Latoya drama. Um, I, I, I do want to see if there's going to be a Sunsetter fallout because 
Yeah. Oh. Latoya was not happy with how the sun setters kind of imploded. And so, and she's pretty vocal about her opinion. So I could see that Beth not standing for it and the little bit of, and which cast member might start a podcast? Rohan and Kyle. That's my guess. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I would love. I would love Austin and Braden though to have a podcast. That would be. They really would be. Cute. I would watch that. That or like yeah, like a YouTube channel where they do like makeup, like friends chatting. Like I feel like they would just yeah have like a cute little Kiki kind of you know Austin me Kiki whatever. Something like that. Yeah, I'd love that. So yeah, I'd say those two. I could also see. Uh, I can see Victoria wanting to do something. I just don't know if she'd do it with somebody else or if it would just be by herself. Like, who would she do something with? I can't see her doing something with somebody else. Yeah, but those people. She could like her and Kiefer would be cute together. I would love that. I would watch. I don't think they would do that. I don't think that's happening. Kiefer, I can see doing it as well. He already has his own radio show, so maybe he's going to start something on his own, maybe surrounding representation in reality TV and like maybe start, like I don't know, talking about reality TV from an Indigenous person perspective. And who will have a makeup channel? I, I was guessing maybe Bray and, um, and Austin might do... Austin and Bray, Kiki, or like makeup, me type thing. That would be my guess. Hmm? Oh, Julie in there? Oh, Julie. Yeah, I can see Julie. Oh, the the dolls. The dolls can come back. I can see the dolls coming back together, actually. Um, Now that the season is done, and they could do definitely makeovers on Barbie dolls. Exactly. And I think that Julie already has a really big social media following. I'm not sure if it is on YouTube or not. And so maybe she would just be doing that a little bit more. So yeah, Julie as well. I totally forgot about her. Well, this is it, I think. Do you guys have any more questions in the chat? You know, we love to talk to you. Jojo, do you have anything else you want to say about the season? I want to thank you for having me all season. You're it's my, my pleasure. To speak to about Big Brother. Yes. Oh, thank you. You're my favorite as well. I caught it. <laughs> um, I, I mean, obviously, I love talking about Big Brother, and I talk to you about Big Brother a lot. And so you are definitely, yeah. definitely up there with my favorite people to talk ad nauseum about this insane show Jonathan. that we love. And of course, Jonathan, I'm talking to you right now. You know, you you two are the only two that I talk to every day about Big Brother. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Oh, I just wanted to thank Jonathan for Wednesdays. Of course, though. I mean, I was gonna. I could talk. I could t message him in person, but you know what? I will do it on this stage, Jonathan. If you are watching, I am so appreciative on Wednesdays that you were able to come and chat with me because you, as well, are one of my favorite people to talk to about Big Brother. Um, you always had a great perspective. Neither me or you or JoJo, I guess, won the draft because none of us had ties. So that is really interesting. Um, but yes, I love you both. I love everybody in the chat. Oh, bye Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> yes, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, B Bean. Thank you, Dolores. Um, I know you're gonna be watching later. Brianna, um, Fashion. If I miss anybody else, we definitely M love and M Moses. Is M Moses here today? No, but no. usually. I think I that's true. Happy early birthday to those born on May 12th. <laughs> those Taurus people. 
Um, yeah, it's definitely been a great season. So much fun. I love getting to know all you guys in the chat. Um, I do feel like I know you, even though I have no idea what you look like other than your little, like, your little circle emblems. I'm like, okay, BB's here, or Natalie. Like, I just recognize you from that, which I think is really cute and funny that I wouldn't be able to recognize you in person if I bumped into you. So I still love getting to know you guys and your opinions. You know where to find me. I'll still be doing um, the challenge All Stars on Fridays at 10 p.m. on Reality Realness and at 8 p.m. on Reality Pop with Chris. Um, and so, yeah, we'll be seeing you guys very soon. And I heard that Reality Pop might be having some interviews with some house guests. So if you're still looking for maybe me and a JoJo or me and a Jonathan talking to some of these Big Brother Canada 9 players, it looks like some interviews might be in the works. So stay tuned. We're not gone for good. Um, we'd probably come on either on a Monday, a Wednesday, or a Thursday at the same time around that we would be doing um, Big Brother. So around between like 8 and 10 would be probably the time that's my guess but i'll let you guys know when i know more so would you be down to doing some interviews joseph if that were the case yes, yes. amazing and you got to do it guys rowdy pops almost at a thousand subscribers or like i think close to 700 so just you know give them a little subscribe You're gonna be your new hub for all things reality tv we're covering the challenge lots of survivor content survivor international content we are trying to build our you know network of reality tv content and we can't do it without you so thank you so much for joining us this entire season on the blog with me and with jojo and with jonathan and with michelle <laughs> thank you so much everybody love you all good night <laughs>